Thank you, everybody. Welcome to my living room. I never thought I would actually make a presentation sitting in my living room. My name is Mario Rodriguez, and I'm more than happy to share my lessons learned in developing a component library for AEM. I'll start with the question. What is the best piece of code that you've ever written, right? Think about the logic, the elegance in which you solve this uh, algorithm, how proud you were. Think about how you link this into your profile in LinkedIn, created a GitHub account, right? And you have this very beautiful building block. Um, I have to say that I didn't know about Dylan's presentation this morning, but it's kind of a same story, right? Think about your code being uh, massively used in applications and being extremely popular, you start expanding your building blocks, right? And as you go along, you see that people start using your building blocks in ways that you've never thought before. You just leave my two-year-olds do some stuff and you have no idea what they can do it. Big buildings can be set up, big applications based on your building blocks, layer on top of layer, that makes any change a crucial one. Uh, so for example, how you accommodate really good improvements versus other not so useful, like replacing the bottom left blue block with a mini cheese, that makes no sense, the, the thing will fall. So you start even believing and feeling bad because you're the bottleneck. A lot of people asking you questions, a lot of pull requests to merge, uh, very little time to, to make it, right? So welcome to the library world, right? There's a shift for mine in which you work on a project versus working a library. And I wanted to try to help you with three concepts today flexibility, versioning, and how you organize your teams or, or people, and, and how we learn or things that we did, some things better than others. I have to say that this is no solution for other problems. There is no holy grail for components. There's no unique bullet that will kill all the components. But uh, I have to say that there's some really good things to share, even from a software development point of view that applies not only to components, but good API, right? So let's start with that, the inflexible. Um, of course, everybody will tell you a good architecture is always extensible. A good architecture is always good. And I have to say that a Sling, AEM, it is a very uh, extensible. Uh, you support the inheritance in different ways. HTL, as it's probably used in the base page, uh, you can extend and include and be very flexible. Dialogue can save new properties, right? Um, just wanted to stress that again, try to leverage that because now you are a library component. Now you're a different, you are not a project uh, in which you can move things around on your own. Once you release, it's basically written on stone. So you want to allow for more flexibility. The more you use include, the more your templates are more flexible, uh, the more people will use your components. And in this case, you see call to action here to the lower right, how it's being used in, in the component. So it can be overwritten, the same with image. This is a good example that I think every project has. So uh, another in, very important topic was the use of models. So normally in your project, you will have a model, but in this case, think about using an interface instead of a class. So the T-series model is actually an interface, basically because you want to offer the interface and the implementation and uh, leverage the delegate pattern for consumer projects to use. So if they want to adapt the list to their own needs, they can do it. For example, you may wonder what, uh, what is that delegate pattern? If you haven't uh, seen it in work with Sling, there is a link here to the right, but basically allows you to, as uh, you see in the lower left, the component definition, uh, declares a resource super type using, in this case, as an example, the list from the core components. And then to the right, you can see, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but you can see the lizard, this teaser list model implementation having the self annotation. So it automatically injects the list. And this is very powerful because you're already out of the box getting all the power of the list in your components, right? And so it's a, pattern that you should use. Another thing more controversial because we're thinking about library, not a project. We include the implementation Java class as part of the package. 
which means the OSGI bundle will offer that. Your consumer projects need sometimes to extend, and in this case, it will save them a lot of time. They will be uh, very happy with you because they cannot have to reuse it. At the same time that you offer the implementation, you have to be aware of some methods that you normally have protected or have private, right? So the comparators, for example, or any type of decoration, or even a get to a model, or just think about again, should I make it private or not, right? What do I want to expose uh, is, a, is a different game now that you're a library. Other things that might come, um, this is a good example. Uh, we have a layout configuration in Noom that was obviously holding all the layout for column control. This also is on a scale. You have to think uh, of your consumer when you define uh, certain classes. So that's another challenge that you need to face, right? And we basically cover the accessibility on HCL in Java. Uh, some very basic topics that were really important for us, but were really repeated over the history. And now we're going to go into versioning. So uh, just to give you an idea of our uh, uh, ecosystem here, we have a one laundry instance with six, there are only some five, but we're going to have six consumer projects. These are big projects, uh, laundry, beauty, uh, the best brands, and those two are here. And they use a library. In this case, it's the Hecor library. If you can see in the box to the right, they have different versions. So one of the important things of version is that any version that we do cannot have a breaking thing, cannot break anything, and it should be backwards compatible. And as you probably noticed that if we deploy in the same AM instance, then the highest version will always override the other ones. And all these six, so to give you an idea of the complexity of when you have six different projects using the same library is that you cannot demand when a change, if you change an interface, there will be six projects that need to do regression testing with different life cycles and with different deployment dates. So uh, that was a, quite a challenge for us. So good suggestion is, uh, yes, this is also one of the good advices that sometimes are hard to, to keep, but think and focus on the package level, how you create your own domain. Think about modules and how you can group them better, because that will help you to be logically separated. If you have a user management, if, for example, you have a one trust or cookie consent, in our case, separate a different module so that they can have their own version. And the same goes all the way to a component. Really closely, co uh, closely classes that are together will help you think differently, right? Uh, the baseline Maven plugin works really well. I see a lot of projects using it. Uh, you just have to declare this. And the build process open compilation will compare your classes and will tell you even how you need to increase the version. Compares against Nexus and tells you uh, the differences that breaking changes that you did. Additionally, grouping. Grouping is important. There are different approaches. I think we initially started with uh, grouping a version on top, but uh, let me see, this is more clear to you. Um, the version one or the version should be as close as possible to the component itself and to the models. That way you can group things together. In the previous example, you can group certain components thinking that will be better, but at the end for us, it was not practical, right? So you can have accordion on different models or under version one that didn't scale, right? So the bottom is what we thought was the most useful and scalable solution. Another mistake that we did is grouping miscontext our configuration in a parent package. Of course, if you think about it, this is probably the code that changes the most. You change configurations for analytics, JTM, or you change configurations on uh, navigation on your sites. Uh, all these things are changed quite frequently. If they are not in their own, then you always require a breaking change. And when you're developing, again, this is a change of mind. This is saying you're not working for your project, you're working for a library. So it doesn't make sense to keep version 2.0 in a version one package, right? So uh, try to have no cons have more consistency with those versions. And at the same time, I know you will feel bad copying code, 
uh, but try as much as you can to do it. Because uh, I'll give you an example. We once changed the image version one, though it was an easy change, but implied six uh, projects to apply a hotfix, right? So uh, did you an idea that we're relying on not the basic rule of the library is not breaking your consumer projects more than keeping things uh, duplicated as possible for less as possible, right? Talking about breaking. So I, I do have several stories about breaking and I'm very thankful of the team because if it wasn't for the team uh, and the committers, the library is not where it is right now, right? So uh, one morning at 9.30, Santiago from the Health CRM team, which is a big laundry project, discovered in Ref that there was a problem with image. They was communicating in the Slack channel, and then Sasha Tarasenko from SKP, which is Beauty, read the message and started interacting with Santiago and as other colleagues joined in. By 12.30, when I was getting out of the meetings, there was already a hotfix plan and the problem was solved. So, it's, it's, it's crucial to be careful with breaking fixes, but also be crucial to have a, a knowledge on the team, right? So breaking fixes must be avoided at all costs. If you have a deleting a method, provide a deprecated annotation and keep everybody informed, but uh, we currently do not support any type of breaking fix. Be careful of things that are not caught by the bind plugin, right? And we do stress a lot changes to the dialogues or content. Although we can provide with Groovy scripts to, to migrate content, everybody should be aware of it on point or another. Especially consumer projects, right? If you have to require a, a content change, that's also quite um, an aggressive change. So we came back to the beginning, what organizations lessons we learned, right? It was not easy to achieve what we had. We, from the core team had um, a lot of pressure, as you probably imagine. People coming from different projects, asking a lot of questions, getting their priority. And basically what you know is twisting around. You know, there's that story of Tom Sawyer where he was to paint uh, the fence and made everybody was his friends help him. It's similar to here. People are, that are empowered to do the change uh, can not only take out your, your workload, but also improve the vision for the library and enrich them. So how do we do that? Well, at least I would try it. So trust, be clear on the purpose of the library uh, because that helps you with the trade-off. Uh, the documentation has to be really good up to date. Otherwise people will not be able to use it first or learn why decisions were taken. And half a process will clear accountabilities which is not easy, it's not copy and paste. Every project has their own process. I'll give you here some guidelines that we did on how to report defects from different projects, how to change documentations, uh, who is responsible. Every link there has a glass frog, glass frog role. So we also leverage holacracy, right? And as you see, everybody's involved and from project managers to requirement engineers, QA, and of course developers. We, um, Include all tech leads of the projects for the pull request review, which sometimes is noisy, that's true. But um, in case some highlight was needed, uh, comments were done, so it was good. Uh, also, discuss ideas before you make the pull request help us a lot. So uh, there are big decisions that you have to take sometimes that affect everybody, uh, how multi-site management will work, how, what decisions you have in templates, yeah, so have them ready before you make a pull request in order to save time. Um, yes, uh, frequent releases are key and have the flexibility to test and make sure that they are there. Smoke testing was also important to validate that at least all the big consumer applications, smoke testing, no regression testing, will at least will not break. Internal, of course, so code coverage is important uh about 50 percent at least so that we can prepare uh have a proper base and people also know how to test and provide with test content that's also some of the key parts of the library 
there's a lot of things to say, but um, um, a lot of people to thank. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure working in, in a center with you to the community of people from everywhere uh, and how you guys uh, make things happen. So I don't list any names because I always leave someone behind, but I want to thank everybody also for your attendance. And I think now we can go to questions if there are any. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, there aren't any questions. Uh, so if you're done, we can wrap it up. Well, I think I, either I was so clear or too confusing, but I hope this was helpful, at least with these three things of flexibility and versioning our experience and how we did it will help you frame your own. And of course, any questions, feel free to ping me directly. <laughs>